If you've ever wanted to play the PC emulated copy of a mobile port of a PC game, this might be the video for you. <laughs> it's just such a ridiculous situation. So this will be a video showing you quickly how to play the official emulator for PUBG Mobile on PC. So you can play the mobile port of the PC game back on your PC. And some of my thoughts on how it runs, because it's actually a kind of interesting situation. This is also the first formal video I'm recording in the new space. It's not sound treated yet. It's probably a little echoey. We don't have all the things on the walls, but we're getting there. This is going to be pretty cool. Let's get into it right after this. Useful tech education and gaming nostalgia that won't put you to sleep. Get subscribed and turn on notifications so you won't miss the next guide. Plex is the media streaming app that beautifully organizes your media collections and lets you securely access them on all your screens. Now with live TV viewing and DVR. Click the link in the video description to learn more. So this guy doesn't have any too crazy or secret steps or anything like that. You go to the URL, which is like a bunch of letters <laughs> in the description down below. It is the official Tennyson Gaming Buddy emulator that they have for PC. You download it, you install it, and then you probably need to reboot at least once. I had the issue where once I ran the little Gaming Buddy platform, nothing ever showed up in the window. But after a couple reboots, suddenly it showed PUBG Mobile as an option and automatically started downloading it. Once it's done, you can go into it. Now the game has both the emulator and the game has some settings. So the emulator settings allow you to choose the different graphics engines. So there's OpenGL and DirectX, and then there's like the plus variants. So I use DirectX plus, and then there's smart mode. And then you get to choose with what resolution it runs at. By default at the moment, it's locked to HD. Uh, in the future, they will be adding Ultra HD support, but that is not exactly here yet. And then you have in the game settings, you have those options as well. You have the high, medium, low graphics settings, just like on mobile. And then you have a frame rate mode, which is actually just a kind of like target frame rate area. And so of course I hit extreme, which targets 60 FPS. If you go to the one before that, which is like ultra, it targets around like 40 FPS. And so it says, you know, since it's made, since, since that option is supposed to be for mobile devices, it's like if your device gets too hot or starts freaking out, lower it because your device can't handle it. But for PC, not a problem. For my test system, I did run this on the highest settings with all of the, you know, high frame rate, high resolution options involved at full screen 1440p on an Intel Core i7 8700K and a GTX 1080. Uh, Supposedly, you know, this is supposed to be, I mean, it's a mobile port, so it should be optimized for lower end rigs. I do hope to do some testing in the future with my i5-2400 rig and the Ryzen 2200G just to see how it performs on the lower end systems. That you also get the option to choose different color schemes. Uh, so there are not color schemes, but like graphics modes. So there's the default mode, but then there's like colorful, which adds a little bit of saturation and brightness. And then there's realistic mode and soft mode. And you have some pretty good options. And then you have key bindings. So by default, it sets up the default PUBG key bindings, but you can actually change that in the emulator settings. And the emulator itself adds overlays over top of all the different options for which keys you need to hit. They have done a really good job establishing this as a proper emulated version. And I am super happy with it. Load it up, go full screen, turned on MSI Afterburner to get some frame rates and things like that, and it ran pretty well. On my system, it did not sustain a constant 60 FPS. There were some jitter into the mid 50s or whatever every once in a while, but for the most part, it was a 60 FPS experience. It, I, I was impressed with how well it ran. And of course, again, this is on Mac, so if I lowered it to like medium of the core graphic settings or something, it'd probably be locked. And while of course the graphics don't represent the full PC graphical experience, it is certainly way more optimized than the normal PC version of the game, which is just redonkulous. Uh, and it's a lot easier. So they do have an option here where when you launch it, it pops up, it, it detects that you're running it in the emulator. Thus it only currently, supposedly crossplay may come soon, but currently it only pairs you with other people playing on the emulator. That way there's not a huge skill gap, which to me is good. And I think this eliminates the bots. Like most of the players I was playing against do not re resemble the bots that I played against on the actual mobile port. That being said, it is still pretty easy. My very first match, which is all you're seeing here, I got like 13 kills or something and came in third place. And I probably would have came in first had I 
been a little bit more responsive, but I got snarped, sn snarped? I got snarped. I got sniped with a Car 98K, but it feels really good. Like the mouse and keyboard inputs feel good. And that is so important to this kind of experience. And like I said, it ran great. It ran pretty well. And of course there's probably more settings optimizations you can dive into because there's the different graphics modes with OpenGL, OpenGL Plus, DirectX Plus, the smart auto mode. And there, there is an important setting that I want to mention here. And I'm mentioning this afterwards just because if you've played around with it, you might've already seen it. There is an option to automatically change the settings or to, you know, to automatically lower or increase them based on system load. For the PC, you want this off because otherwise any slight hiccup and it will lock you to 30 FPS, which is obnoxious as hell. You don't need to have this on at all. Now, something I do find is sometimes when I launch the game, I need to toggle that on and back off to get it back to 60 FPS. And you can measure that in the menu itself, the little menu with the render of your character. If that's not running 60, the game's probably not gonna run 60 either. So you need to toggle your frame rate mode or toggle that auto setting mode off and on uh, to get it to pull up. But it is pretty cool. One other thing that I like that they have added is you can now disable, it's all enabled in the gameplay you're seeing here, but you can now disable auto door opening, auto item pickup, auto equip, things like that. So you can get it more fine tuned to be like the PC version. That way you're more in control of what you're doing, or you can leave it on for auto loot if that's what you desire as well. It took a little getting used to, but I might leave some of the options on, whereas like door opening, I want to turn off and things like that. I also thought it was worth noting that the Game Buddy browser appears to have, you know, a lot of empty slots as if to potentially support other Tennyson games in the future, which would be really cool to get an official emulator support of this depth for the rest of their mobile game catalog. And I certainly look forward to seeing those releases should they come. So if you ever wanted to play PUBG Mobile on your computer and get a more casual, easy Battle Royale experience that's still fun and still has PUBG core gameplay at its heart, this is it. Of course, down the link to the game will be in the description down below, along with the link to our sponsor sign up for Plex. Go check that out. Hit the like button if you enjoyed this video. Get subscribed for more awesome tech content. I'm Eples Fox here to make tech easier and more fun, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.